Hey guys, with season three, they added a ton of new storyline, which happens to be my favorite, my wife's favorite thing. Yep. And we are somewhat experts in uh, Norse mythology. We read a book. And we read a book. <laughs> That's yeah. what he means. Yeah, we read. A, we read two, I we read, listened to a book. I read two books. I listened to one book. And that makes us pretty much. I mean, they were good books, which is why we're experts. Yeah. Because good books create experts. So are we going to pause and comment as we read? Like, we're not going to wait till yeah, we Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. totally. So, uh, so if you guys know that when you go into the Temple of Ancestors, uh, and this is season three, for those of you who haven't joined yet in season three, you go over to this guy and he's like, hey, there's all these tales that you can be told. And then he, you can go into the green zones or the, the rock and forest zones and get this book. Uh, and then you can go over here and get these, the pages of this book. And then that's how you get season points. But they also tell a story. So in this episode, uh, we're going to go and we're going to, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you what this book says. We're going to read it for you guys. Oh, I was wondering that on our last episode when we were looking for those book pages. Yeah. Do you have to collect them all before you can read it? Yes. So we're spoiler. So we're this spoiler, spoiler alert. Alert. We're ruining it if for you. You would rather wait until after you collect all the books on your own than you do not want to. If watch you this haven't episode. collected these books though, the these the sagas. So maybe next episode is going to be the real spoiler. You're pretty behind, like because okay great it's been a little while okay let's read it do you want to start okay book one a trick when pondering in solitude odin was talking to himself that evening he was thinking a lot of asgard in that it was time for him to leave the town and find the cause even if it meant sacrificing his eye the norns had to tell him everything but they were hiding from him in the land of mortals lands of mortals Loki, lurking at the door of the All-Father's Hall, heard his monologue. Although having no clue what cause Odin was talking about, the trickster was beaming with felicity. He had already come up with a trick he would turn Odin's leaving into, and was thinking how smart it would look like. What Loki would have to say if he could foresee what Odin would do to him for that mischief. The mischief worth of the old life to people and the gods. Loki nevertheless chose his victim. Loki chose hell because he liked to amuse his loved ones. Okay, so. You scroll down. Yeah, we're gonna scroll down. But before we scroll down, already some thoughts. I'm confused about what's happening. Yeah, well, part of that's because of the English translation, which is maybe okay. not ideal. But also, I'm thinking this is an alternative Norse mythology because yeah. uh, Loki and hell, like, you know. I don't oh. remember them ever having interactions. Yeah, Odin liked Hell. It was like his, like a adopted daughter. No, Hell was his victim. Did he ever play a trick on Hell? I don't think so. I forget why Hell had half a face of death. Oh. Um, but. How did Odin lose his eye? Yeah, that's what I want. I'm not gonna ruin it because just in case they tie that into the as we scroll down. But I don't remember. I, I know I, how he lost his eye. I seem to remember. Is it to a giant? No, I'm. Not I'm not gonna ruin it. Loki knew what she wished. How she craved to turn the living into the dead. Loki couldn't help taking advantage of this knowledge. His trick was really smart. It ruined thousands of lives, but most importantly, it devoted him to destruction. For in that very moment, the Norns crossed his name. Okay, so the Norns are like the Fates. Got it. Okay. And so I guess that they're using them really like the Fates, which they weren't quite that much like yeah. the Fates. What are the Fates for people who don't know? <laughs> the Fates is in Greek mythology. The people who, if you've ever watched the movie Hercules, they have the string. Yes, and Hercules and is so accurate. Yeah, but that's, they had. I mean, it. Yeah, yeah. Hercules was inaccurate, but at least you have a picture. The yeah, fates. Yeah, you got some really did they decide, ugly. Did they decide when you died, though? Was the string and in the, the scissors? In the fates, they do. The Norns, I didn't think they did, which is why You're confused, I'm, I'm a little confused why. 
So, um, but okay, they didn't tell the trick. So I'm still not going to tell you how Loki lost his, or how Odin lost his eye because I don't want to ruin it yet. I want to comment once we get to that point. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go into book two, The Dark Citadel. These pages you can get in the Forest of Shadows or Desperate Foothills in the, the land or in the tombs. It's still pretty hard to get. It's not as easy as doing Odin's, but um, it's, well, I guess technically it's easier than doing all of Odin's to get one of these books, but it's not the easiest way to get points for the season. Um, but okay, let's go into this book. When the construction of the Citadel started, Hel personally instructed her helpers on what her abode had to look like. She referred to Horfa, her favorite tower, rising above the dry fields of Helheim. It was a beautiful citadel, but unfortunately none of the new servants of the goddess had been in her kingdom. Neither Kirga nor Ingra or any of the other witches knew what the citadel looked like. The witches addressed Hel's envoy for advice, but they were too dumb to explain. They didn't even understand what they were asked about. Kirga didn't want to disappoint Hel and decided to go down to Helheim to see the tower. She knew the underworld was deep underground, but this knowledge alone was not enough. She cast a spell of icy whirl on the old river and having made a whirl, jumped into the river. Before we read the rest of this chapter, I'm just gonna go real quick to the world map and we are going to talk a little bit about what is already going on, right? Kirga, which we haven't met in the game yet, but Kirga is the witch in charge of the northern lands, okay? Yeah, it is. Here's the Hall of Kirga. And so she's one of Hell's servants, and she's pissing off the giants, and the giants are asking for our help. Um, so that's kind of how that is. Um, and then the Hell's envoy's right here, and he's big and strong, but it makes sense that he's dumb. And then... We've got, oh, Icy World doesn't exist anymore. <sighs> so I'm, you're gonna have to go watch one of my old videos, but there used to be this like whirlpool in the river. And that's what I'm like 90% sure that's what they're talking about. She did the cast, the cast a spell of Icy World in the river so she could go down to Helheim because it used to say, this is a path down to Helheim. Okay. Anyways, since then people believe that the whirl of the old river is originally a spell, which somehow hasn't gotten worn off over time. As for Kirga, she saw her mistress's favorite tower and managed to reconstruct its perfect replica on the surface. The only innovation she added was a lock. She asked giant smiths to forge a lock that could be opened only by the keys made from God's weapon. She asked the giant smiths to forge a lock that could be opened only by the keys made of the God's weapons. When Hel saw her new abode, she was gloriously happy. However, shortly after, she decided that one citadel was not enough. She ordered Kirga to raise new citadels all the way to the horizon where her domain ended. Okay, so first of all, the lesson that we should all learn is don't <coughs> serve evil Hell. bosses well. Right. Because when you serve an evil boss well, they're like, great, now do lots Go do more. more evil. So don't be an overachiever. Don't be an overachiever, guys. Just stay at home playing video games. Oh my god. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So a few things on this. Um, so the, the keys that they're talking about. So this is the Citadel right here. Okay. You'll see that. That's, oh, got that's it. the Citadel. And there's the five keys made of the God's weapons. I have two of them. Uh, we have the Elder's key and the Hell's Envoy key. And then there's the Ice Giant's key, which I'm assuming is going to be in Kirga's castle. And then the Drowner's key, which we used to think was in that whirlpool, but that's gone. And then there's Odin's. None of those keys exist yet. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. If they had, I would have gotten them. Gotten them. Uh, and then, so th I'm assuming that, you know, Kyrgyz, the Hall of Kyrga might have something to do with this tower. Or maybe there's going to be more towers just like this one. But that's all we have here so far. You know, one thing they said in there that they said the, the giant smiths, that's talking about the dwarves. Uh, right now, we don't think of dwarves as being giant, but in Norse mythology, giant smiths the doors were literally giant smiths so that was probably just a bad translation but the doors were huge okay so now we are on to book three which the way to get this is just to do odin's the uh, the sanctum and the guest hall and you can get these five pages which gets you this book book three a gift Tormund was the first whose head was cracked open 
However, the fatal wound didn't kill him. The dripped blood blinded his eyes, and for a while, neither could he see anything nor even feel pain. Yet, death didn't come. When the battle was over, the Vikings approached Torment and washed his head. Imagine their surprise when they didn't find any wounds. That day had to be the last for others too, but it wasn't. The enemies were also alive, so continuing the battle was senseless. Having figured out they were unable to go to Valhalla, some of them were grieving, while others, like Torment, were drinking to the gods' well-being, by the grace of whom they had stayed safe. Every warrior had their own ideas on why they didn't die, yet none of them knew the real cause. This is awesome, because this ties into the whole concept of Frostborn of why we don't die. You lose your stuff, but you don't oh, end up dying. Oh, interesting. Okay, That's okay, what okay, they're okay, kind okay. of bringing into. And another thing is, in Norse mythology, when you die, if you're a valiant warrior, you go to Valhalla. If you're right. not a valiant warrior, then you go down to Helheim. Yeah, actually, this was the saddest part of Norse mythology to me, is they talked about how Odin purposely sometimes wanted strong warriors so he might take them from the battlefield to defend his hall against... Ragnarok. R yeah, and preparing for Ragnarok, which he, he already he knew dies. he was going to lose. Yeah, because it was prophesied. I know, but it's just so pointless. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Anyways, so this is cool that they're bringing in the story yeah. into what, why we don't die in Frostborn. Tormund thought that Hell was the only one who could be responsible for that. Bringing a dead one back to life, not letting a living one die, the interference of the goddess of death was undeniable. When he shared those thoughts with his brothers, many supported him. The Vikings decided that Hell took care of them, that she was the only one who didn't abandon people. Thus, Tormund and several clans opposing his family united. They went west, hoping to find Hell and show their gratitude for the gift. Tormund. Tormund. What a turd. Oh, is that bad? That no, he's, he's just dumb. Hell's the bad guy. Yeah. Sorry, Tormund. You just got you you got hit in the head a little too hard. But I, I am really curious why we don't die. And I love that they, they've got something. Got it. But it's not hell because we're fighting against hell. So it can't be hell. Is it Loki's trick? I don't know. Maybe. Guys. That seems the most obvious to me. why I married her. She's smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so book four is the forge. And I don't know why the archives is orange and the forge is purple. It seems backwards to me. But you have to get seven different pages to do the forge. And, you know, the forge is not something you can do easily. So you can only do the forge every three days or every six days, assuming that you don't have a bunch of keys lying around. Right. So, um, okay, so this is the forge. And now let's go into this book. Book four, The Seer. Daredevils and fools who stayed in the north said that they met an old man who was waiting for the appearance of the town on the river. The old man seemed insane. His speech was disoriented. All he had was a skinny horse and a funny wagon. He wasn't in a hurry, just waiting as if the town was just going to appear right in front of him. His route passed along the shore. He swore that a town was soon to appear somewhere. He swore that a town was soon to appear somewhere there. Maybe his mind was confused by the white night so he could no longer sense time or maybe he was talking about the future. No one was trying to wrap their head around his words, yet many old timers remember seeing him right where Newheim is built. Is this the old guy that is on your base with the cart? Yeah, which I've always thought he was Odin's. I've told I You told, thought he was Odin. I always thought he was Odin. Yeah. So if he is Odin, then that horse should not be skinny. It should be uh Swiffelfeisen or whatever. Swiffelfeisen. Or whatever his name is, the fastest horse ever with eight legs. Shadowfax, what? No, it's not Shadowfax. Get out of here, Lord of the Rings. Okay. So, but yeah, the... the so that old man seems to be Odin. I don't know. In I disguise. mean, Odin in Norse mythology often would show up and just kind of as an old often man. Often as an wonder, old man, right? As yeah. a wonder. Okay. Yeah. The old man kept telling that the White Knight came right after the Great Feast. He assured that the mistress of the underworld had proposed a toast that made the day eternal. Immortal, cried the old man. Soon all of you will be immortal. I swear a town will rise up here. Not only the madman waiting for the town gate to open for him knew about the construction of the town, meant to join people and the gods. 
the Norns did too. They could inform Hell about the danger, but preferred to keep it to themselves and refrain from playing a momentous role. I mean, that is another sign that Hell might be involved, but Hell is the bad guy, and we're in our immortality. We know Hell's the bad guy. Well, for it sure, seems for sure. that way. Okay. That's the way it's set up. Okay. So, and we're we're opposed to Hell. I mean, let's be honest. In Norse mythology, all of the gods at some point in time are the bad guy. That's true. That's true. Not a one of them is one that you would maybe want to like. Okay, I think the last book will hopefully clear things up. Okay, let's go. Let's read it. Okay, here's the last book. You got to get seven. Again, seven pages, and this is the archive. So (laughs) this is really hard to do um, because you got to get, like, pages from, like, killing the bosses. So... This is the hardest book to complete, so let's read it. Book five, Siege. Once Sigurd, the last king of the north, gathered his bodyguards and set off to Hell's Citadel. Shortly before the siege, a pathfinder came to town wishing to speak directly to the king. That night, they had a long discussion about something. Although their conversation was away from prying ears, rumors started spreading around the influential clans. People were saying that the pathfinder saw draugers, hordes of the dead crossing hopeless gorge and heading here to the east. Among them, there were creatures of unbelievable size, greater than giants. People didn't know then that those were Hell's envoys. Okay, before we read to the next page, uh, here's King Sigurd right here. Oh. And uh, and there here are all the hordes coming over, what was it, Hope? Like hope. Hopeless go- Gorge. Hopeless Gorge, yeah. There's Hopeless Gorge right there. Oh, and they're supposed to be, like, fighting them. And they're fighting them. Some of you don't know that this guy gets knocked down here in a little bit. Oh, does it loop? It does a loop, but it's pretty cool. Come on. There he is. Look, he's down. This guy's resing him. That was fast. Uh, that's what they're talking about, Hopeless Gorge. Okay. Fear was taking over the town, and a few families left the land. They took their drockers and disappeared in the misty sea. Sigurd convened the council. He explained that the citizens had nothing to be scared of and the rumors about the offensive was a lie aimed at wreaking havoc. Didn't look like a lie. Well, they were shooting into Keep that. Reading. I'm sorry. What's gonna happen? And yet, Sigurd's bodyguards started preparing for the siege. The Pathfinder's keen eye noticed a familiar figure among the dead, the figure he used to frequently see by the king's side. The Pathfinder knew that the news about that meeting would break Sigurd's heart, but he couldn't keep it a secret. They were preparing for the siege. And then one of the king's bodyguards died? I don't know. Maybe that will come out in the sagas. We'll see. I'm really curious now. Okay, so obviously King Sigurd was wrong, and he is fighting it now. Uh, fighting them at Hopeless Gorge. Also, we've got the Hell's Envoys, which if you guys have never fought Hell's Envoy, it's it's huge. I would not say it's that much... He's not that much bigger than a giant, though. So it would be really cool if they had, like, some pretty cool big like boss large, fights yeah. that are even bigger than a giant. Is King Sigurd in the mythologies? Uh, he's either in the mythologies or he's actually a character in history. I can't remember. It's very familiar. He kind of reminds me of Theoden, another Lord of the Rings reference. She's Lord of the Rings nerd. Well, yeah, I mean, my gamer name. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right, Eowyn. Okay, so here we are. Uh, these are the five books, right? Once you get the books, then you come back over here to this room, <gasps> and you have to get the five sagas Boom, to bam. get the final saga. Uh-huh. So, for example, we need saga one and saga... So- or sorry, book one and book three to be able to get saga one. And we're going to do the sagas in the next episode. In the yes. next episode. Maybe the next two episodes that's, pending. We'll that's see. That's true. It, I mean, we'll see how it goes. But we're going to really bring out the story and make sure we work through all the details. Big shout out to Mad Ghost and Intrusion for giving me all of the pages yeah, that's awesome, of yeah. this book, of the five books and the five sagas and the last saga. So we are going to go through. We have all the screenshots. And if you want to see them, make sure to check out the next episode. All right, guys. See you next time.